Hey everyone, welcome to AlleyMonroe.com. We're back with another tutorial. Uh, this tutorial is going to be how to create a, a jellyfish. Uh, earlier this week, I was not sure what I was going to make. I want to make a under. I, I knew I wanted to make a sea creature of some sort, and I came across uh, this old uh, PDF file that I found. Uh, Maya jellyfish. Uh, I tried to follow this tutorial back in 2004, and I couldn't get it to work. And uh, so I thought, well, it's been a few years. Why not give it another go? So. Uh, but this time we're using 3D Studio Max, and I actually had no idea how to make the tentacles. So this tutorial is on how I went about making those uh, tentacles. Uh, here's an example of what we're going to create. Okay, so this underwater effect with the particles here in the light, that's uh, all going to be done in After Effects. Uh, we're going to be creating, I'll go ahead and create that for you, and uh, I'll put a plug in for where I got that tutorial from. However, this is what we're going to be creating here, this jellyfish. So we have a very simple cylinder uh, for the, the body of the jellyfish. It's going to be animated with a free, uh, free form deformer uh, animation on the control points. Uh, these tentacles here in the middle, they were just created with a plane noise modifier along with some noise controllers in the uh, bend and wave modifiers. So they are very subtle, but they do animate with water. And these tentacles outside, they're actually created with particles uh, using um, a particle flow. So as they get to a certain distance away from the body, they disappear. So we'll go ahead and get started. To start, we're going to go ahead and start with the body. Create a cylinder here. Make sure it's at zero, zero, zero. Just right-clicking on the Move tool. All right, we're going to lower our sides here down to eight. We're going to be using a mesh smooth on this anyways. All right, I'm going to throw an edit poly modifier on top of this guy. We're just going to start sculpting uh, the jellyfish out here. Just uh, more or less as a default position, so not when he's stretched or ready to, uh, when he's sucking in water. We'll just bring it to right about this kind of state here. Maybe a little bit rounded here. Okay, so very simple jellyfish. Uh, when the tutorial is over, whenever you want, uh, feel free to go and uh, make apply what you learn on how to make the tentacles to your own jellyfish. Be uh, really curious to see what people can come up with. So just for some reason, I have my ambient turned all the way up to white here, just lower that back down. All right, so for this top face here, I'm just going to inset it, bring it in a little bit. and convert this to vertices. I'm going to weld these vertices together. All right, and then I'm going to grab each edge. And before I move forward, I'm probably wondering, like you'll get halfway through this tutorial and find out that you don't have what you need to make this. Uh, uh, everything in this tutorial is going to be completely made with uh, 3D Studio Max. You should have no problem with older versions as well. And uh, the compositing and color correction can be done with any compositor. I'll show the examples of how I did it. But don't worry about having to go find some plugins and stuff like that. So I'm going to inset this bottom face here. All right, and we're going to keep extruding this up and kind of follow the form here of the body, just so we have it match on the inside. Just give this guy some overall thickness. Now we could have used the shell modifier for this, but we're not trying to follow the exact silhouette of this guy. So at the end, we still would have had to push and pull some vertices. So we're just going to... Pull this around. That's essentially all I really want to get, something like that. And we're also going to have a, a torus sitting inside here. This is where the interior tentacles are going to be connected to. And we don't need as many segments on that as well. This will be actually barely seen at the end. So, Hopefully about there. It looks like I got some uh, vertices here when I scaled in, but I actually can leave it like that, see what happens when we mesh smooth this. Maybe we'll get a little bit more of an organic look to this character. So mesh smooth. Iterations of two. Yeah, I think we'll go in and actually fix those vertices there. Okay. 
All right, so simple enough, that's our jellyfish. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna just lower my durations down one for here, just while I'm animating this FFD deformer. So we're gonna grab free form deformer, four by four by four, let's click on that. So what happened there is I was still in vertex mode under my edit poly, and because none were selected, the freeform by default just went down to 0, 0, 0 and just was very small. Uh, with no vertices selected, when you apply the, the deformer on top of everything, it will encase the entire object in question. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're just going to create three poses. So we're going to need to select all these vertices, oh, and to do that we'll open up the, div, the modifier and just click on control points. So we're going to select all of these and we're going to hit key. All right, we'll move forward a few frames. We're going to adjust the timing here in a moment. So this one here is going to be the movement. So just when he's about to get all the water into him. So he'll come down like this. Probably squash down a little bit. Make sure we're scaling this in all our axes and we're not. Back a little bit. Okay, and all this stuff can be changed later on because we're going to be cycling our keys. So just to come in here and change the way our animation looks won't be difficult at all. All right, we're going to move forward a few more frames, and this is going to be after he's got rid of all the water. So he's going to stretch himself right up. Bring this down a little bit. He'll use this muscle here to push all the water out. Okay, so to get this uh, torus connected inside the jellyfish here, what we're going to want to do is go back to our initial position. So this is where it starts. If we connect this uh, torus into the uh, the model at this point, then he'll actually start deforming while he's already outside the uh, the body of the jellyfish. So we'll go back to frame one, go down to edit poly, and we're just going to attach that torus, and we'll make sure that we have a vertice. We're outside of vertice mode here. We'll just click on edit poly. We'll go up to our freeform and he'll deform with that properly now. Okay, so these are this is our poses that we're going to use, and we're going to have to get this timed out. So I'm going to give it about 200 frames of animation. All right, we know our first pose is going to be um, maybe 60, maybe he'll go into stretch pose rather fast, and then he'll come back to this pose, and this one will be kind of slow. Okay, so watching the timing here, we're going to go, this is where he absorbs the water, he pushes it out to give him some momentum, and then he comes back down. So I think we are going to be moving this guy with um, a helper object, but I think what we're going to do is actually pull these vertices out, try to animate it a little bit at this level. Let's turn our auto key on here, we'll just move it up a little bit. I'm not a fan of this. I want to pull these guys further up, and this guy not is pushed in. Right, and actually, all these guys are maybe a bit too high. All right, perfect. We'll give that a bit more. So 120 frames. Okay, great. So at this point, what we're going to do is get these uh, the cycle and uh, adjust the curves a little bit. So we're going to go to our curve editor, pull this out here, and what we're going to want to do. Let's back over, sorry. I forgot I wasn't using uh, dual monitors for the recording. So. We're going to go into the modified object 
of our cylinder here. And we're going to come in here, find the control points for the FFD. Just go down here. Master, and here's the control points. So we get 60, 64 of them. So what we want to do is select all of them at this point. And we're going to go up to controller, out of range types. And we're going to set this to relative repeat. So what this is going to do is once we hit this point, then we're just going to keep repeating and repeating. Had this um, vertice been up just a little bit, well then this last vertice would have started where that one ended. We're just going to set this to relative and repeat. And as you can see, we get like this uh, uneditable track that keeps going. So any changes that we make at this level will affect everything from here on in. Alright, so our animation is going to cycle. All we have to do is just change these keys and it will change constantly over time. 